Hey Masters of Modern fans, we're doing a meetup at GPLA and we're excited to invite you. Welcome to the shout out video. We just did a top 10 blue red cards. We were so excited. We forgot to tell you guys about how excited we are about this meetup. It's at 900 West Olympic. It is the downtown JW Marriott. It's like less than 10 minutes from the convention center. So when you finish up your day one on Saturday, this Saturday, come hang out with us at the meetup. We'll be hanging out in the main commons bar area. We'll have a Diet Coke, have a drink, whatever you want to do. We'll be shouting it out on Twitter, on Facebook. If you want information below in the description, there's that as well. We can't wait to meet you guys. We'll also be at the hall all weekend, uh, hanging out at uh, the uh, LA Convention Center. Uh, we'll be demoing battle bosses. We'll be playing some Commander. We'll be playing some Modern for sure. And we look forward to seeing you guys there. Uh, just follow us on Twitter to find out where we're going to be. Yeah, thanks, guys. We'll see you at GPLA. Welcome, Welcome travelers. travelers. We're, we're aware, aware that your journey, journey was difficult. difficult. But, but prepare, prepare to have your questions, questions answered, for, for you have been granted an audience with the Masters of Modern. And welcome back to Masters of Modern. I am your host, Alex Kessler, here with my co-host, Ben Bateman. What's up, everybody? We're here. Uh, this is so exciting. It's so much fun to be able to actually sit here now and do the show in front of a camera. Uh, it's the Masters of Modern Podcast. We talk modern on the show. Yeah, so today we're doing a little bit of an early episode. Normally this uh, live stream comes out on Tuesday. This is happening for two reasons. Count it two. Uh, number one is that last week we were a little late. We did the live stream on Wednesday, so we're moving this a little early, kind of the, to average it out so it mm. averages out on a Tuesday. And two, and more importantly, tomorrow, the Battle Bosses Kickstarter launches live. So if you haven't been paying attention to the show, we have a game coming out. It's called Battle Bosses. Uh, it is a collectible model figure game. We've been developing it at Cast for a long time, uh, and we're kickstarting it. And tomorrow, as the first day it goes live, there will be two options. There's 120 that comes with all six bosses. Uh, this whole arena mode map that we filmed the video of that we'll you know be blasting out over the next couple of days. So you'll check that out. It plays a little bit like League of Legends meets the game, and then the tournament mode, which is the one we want to experience that plays a little bit like a tournament game of Magic. And we would love for you guys to go check it out. Uh, in fact, if you look at this video's description uh, on YouTube right now, it has a, a Bitly link or a, a special link that goes to a MailChimp sign-up sheet, and if you sign up there, you'll win the packs that we're about to open out of this Grimoire box. So, Which we will uh, get to in just a minute, we'll explain that, but yes, check out the Kickstarter, it's an awesome game, I verify, I really enjoy this game, it's, it's, it's yeah. well worth supporting. All so. the links are below, you can see it in the YouTube video description, uh, and make sure to sign up for the, the, the mail order, and then make sure to go to battlebosses.com to check out all the information about it. So, today, on the Masters of Modern Podcast where we talk about magic cards. We are going to talk to you guys about is it cards. We've done... Is, is it about... Is that what we're talking about? Yes, blue or red. We've done now what? All of the colors, lands, artifacts. We've done... I think we've done all permanent types, and we and we did, like, cheating, because we did Planeswalkers in that giant ranking every Planeswalker. We ranked every Planeswalker. Uh, so we did... We've done all the permanent types, and we've done all the single colors, and now we've done green, blue, blue, white, uh, and then there's a secret blue black episode that still hasn't been released because uh, it's there, blue black. There's Demir, a lost Demir. SD card that's been found, then lost, then found, then lost. Which is what we expect from the Demir tribe. Yeah. Blue black is gonna. It doesn't really exist. Does it exist? We don't know. We don't talk about it because they'll assassinate us. Right. So uh, today we're doing uh, the last blue um, combo. Yeah. After we're doing those three. We're doing. We're finishing uh, blue off with is it. Yes, so Which is as blue is red the case, for people who don't know all the Ravnica guilds. And this is kind of an interesting point. As is the case with all multicolors in modern, if you're looking for modern playable, so you eliminate all the old invasion or apocalypse stuff, you literally are just looking for cards that are modern playable. Most of these two color combinations, you start to listen, and you're like, oh yeah, this is great, this is awesome. Right. And then you get through about five cards and you're like, ooh, now these are are these modern playable? And then like the bottom few, it's always like is it modern playable? Yeah. We <laughs> make right. that joke a lot today. Third time was the charm, and now let's be done with it. Rule of fives. <laughs> ben, rule of tens. It's the rule of tens. So that is the plan today on the Masters of Modern Podcast. We are going to be talking to you guys about the top ten blue-red cards. The first and foremost thing that I want to ask you guys to do, if you're listening to this or watching this, if it's on audio, this is also on video on the MMCast YouTube channel. It's brand new. We just launched it just over a month ago. Literally live streaming it to YouTube right now. And there's some really cool opportunities in the can here, guys. We have some people that are interested in helping support the show. To do that, we need to grow the YouTube channel. So subscribe, please, comment, like, all of those things. The show is still available on the podcast form. If you're hearing this on audio, it's because it goes out on audio every week. And we appreciate everyone of you that has supported that. But we have a bunch of cool stuff going on. Uh, so coming up, we are going to be doing these blue red cards. But before we get to that... We're doing, every week we're gonna do pack openings. This week, uh, it is brought to you by Battle Bosses. So uh, if you sign up for the link in the YouTube description and everywhere else this episode is posted, you'll be, get onto a MailChimp 
uh, email list that'll be there to kind of update you with Battle Boss content. And someone who signs up through that as a Masters of Modern fan, it's a separate list, will win the packs that we open right now. And so that, we're these packs them. are located inside this Grimoire, which is created by Wizardry Foundry. So, inside here, we have all the packs. All the packs. Uh, there's and some we have, Masters, there's some of every Master, Modern Masters in there, our namesake. So we need to randomize, uh, there are exactly 96 packs in here. Um, so random number generator is what I'm going to do right now because Alex is using his computer. I could down here. It would be probably quicker. Oh, yeah? If you can do it, you can beat no, me. You're, you're already there. 1 to 96. Generate. 54, 54 is the first pack. Alex is going to talk to you while I find out which the 54th pack is. Not in the first half, because there's 48. So, yeah, so to explain two things. One, the way this works is we're doing a pack war. And a pack war uh, functions in the way that we both go through uh, the pack, and we will reveal the cards we get, and then we're going to, whoever has the highest converted mana cost uh, creature wins the pack war. Yes, so and this is a pack. They get to open get? A, a pack, a random pack of their own, uh, and then they keep that random pack, but the two packs we open for the pack war go to... Uh, subscribers are going to do this twice today because the Battle Bosses is sponsoring this episode. Um, so we'll do two of those, and then one of us, the winner of those, will get packs. So, all right, that is my pack. is the Almondcat pack. Alex is now going to click this button. He's going to get a number of his own. Uh, 67. 67. So <laughs> it's going to go 55. So it's 48, 49, 50, 51, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Drum roll. And the last thing to explain is the way is it going to work, uh, the way the top 10 works is lands that have an activated cost uh, that are that color combo, and I get unstable. Unstable? So someone's getting a dope land at the bare minimum. Uh, so yeah, so let's let's do this. You ready? Let's do this. All right. I've got an Amonkhet pack. So the winner of these cards will be a lucky Battle Boss supporter. All right. I'm going to start out. i got a Brute Strength. Ooh. ooh. Sacred Cast. Already cast. starting up high. Cancel here, Bloodlust Insider. So we got we got Spidery a grass. foil angel token. That's pretty cool for whoever is winning these packs. Uh, we got that. guest Two. list Man, as a contraption. Everything here has cost three or less so far. We have a foil contraption, applied aeronautics. Start to finish. Full Art Island. Congratulations, you got the best of the five. Labor of Currents. Oh, you got an island. That's cool. Yep. Uh, Labor my, of the Heart. The rare is cramped bunker. This is uh, unstable, is so weird. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player moves a permanent he or she controls to touch cramped bunker and no other permanent. If he or she can't destroy each permanent that player controls that isn't touching cramped bunker, then sacrifice it. So I don't know if it's even, because I got three. That was six. <laughs> I, I have, oh, I have multiple sixes. I literally don't have a single thing that costs more than three in this pack. Oh, so you, well, uh, what's the, I'll, I'll give you a totaling failure to Oh, really? So three. I get three out of failure to And then if I get that, then I actually get six out of this other one. I get start to finish is six. Okay. Do you have something better than six? Are we combined? I think tie goes to me in that situation. Do you have two sixes? I have three sixes. Yeah, okay, I lose. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, by winning, I get to open a pack at random. We're doing this twice, though, aren't we? Oh, we're going to do it twice. Oh, yeah. Right? Okay, so congratulations to the first person who wins. So that'll be the first packs that go to somebody uh, who signs up to the Mia list. Let's do a second one. Let's do best out of three. Best out of three? I feel like that's the way we're to gonna do We're going to just, okay. Yeah. So we're going to go again. All so right. you're opening on pack number one. I just Random. generated it for you. Pack number one? Pack number one. The very first pack. The very first pack. It's going to be a Battle pack for Zendikar. of Battle for so Zendikar. I'm getting wrecked. Yeah. Uh, 75. So, so I've been counting down from 96, 96, 95, 94, 93, 92, 91, 90, 89, 88, 87, 86, 85, 84, 83, 82, 81, uh, 79, 78, 77, 76, 75. What do you Open got? up. Russian cons. Russian Congratulations. cons. Congratulations. here. Whoever is opening the second pack, you're getting a BFC versus. I might have a chance here. There's you don't some, have a chance? Some, I might have. There's some large morph cards in this. All right. I'm not going to be able to tell you what set it is. All right. So. Is a question. You go, okay, Storm is grind. We're going to answer all of your is a question just as soon as I take these cards from Alex. Uh, all right. So here we go. I start out with a territorial bail off. So I start out strong with a five. I start out with six. My first Oof. opening card. Clutch of Currents, uh, another five on Colostra and Nightwatch. Tandem Tactics is a two. I forget what this card is, Shadow but they Scroll get Recruits it. Shadow Scroll Recruits a five. Uh, oh, it's, it's called um, Icy... Icy Blast or something? Yeah, it's Russian. We don't know what it does. I know what it does. Mortal it taps Mire. creatures down, and then if you have the thing, they don't untap, I think. Yeah, Ferocious. Uh, ferocious. I've, I've got, so far I've got multiple fives. Uh, get some Russian lands in here. Ooh, a, a Russian Biovac. What is it? Russian tricolor land. Oh, sweet. That's cool. Man, I only uh, have five. So you have a Russian six? Russian goblin token. 
Nice. I got a Defiant Bloodlord. I got a seven. You got a seven? I got a seven. Oh, you won this one. I have a bunch of sixes, but no sevens. All right. So, one and one. Ready for the last pack? All right. So now that we've opened, we've now, I, we've now taken packs out of here. So the numbers are now not correct any longer. Doesn't matter. Oh, we can see though, actually. 39. We've taken three out of this side and one out of this side. Uh, how many are on the, each side? 48. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is the pack you're opening. It is... Oh, this is going to be a good one, I can tell. It's the one under that. It's this darker one. Wow. Well, that's good. Eldritch Moon. Okay. And then I am opening 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It's uh, Masters of Modern 3. Modern Masters Pack 3. All, All right. right. Third pack. All right, guys. So whoever's so these are the this, three winners. Yeah, this is going to be a big deal. This yep. all goes to one person? So it's no, like each, three each, yeah, three different people. Okay, got it. Yeah. All right. All right, last one, guys. All right. What are, you, what are you hoping that we open on the live stream? Hoping we open. I got a guild gate. I got a drag under. Ooh, burning tree emissary. Another world, the outburst. Magma jet. I got a weirded vampire. We're up to four. Spell pierce. We uh, previewed that card. Yeah. For the set, right? That was, that yeah. was our preview for the Correct, set. Correct, yeah. Um, yeah jungle too. Shrine. A lot of tri lands today. I got a Mercurial Geists. Ooh. I got a Foil Crumbling Necropolis in here. That's pretty sweet. And a Stony Silence. Yo, you got a Stony? Yeah. That's a real card. Yeah, someone's getting real cards. My Mercurial best card here Geist. is a five drop. I got a Permeating Mass. How, how big is it? Uh, one. I got a Mercurial Geist with my four drop. Oh, what's your, what's your, did I win? I got a four, yeah. That's sweet. all I got. All right. You won? I'm champion. Yeah. All, All right. right, Agent of Mask, best out of three. Congratulations to everyone who's winning these packs. You got a Stony Silence and a Foil Crumbling Necropolis. The foil Crumbling Necropolis, that's a good pack open. Yeah, this yeah. is really good. Yeah, that was a sweet one. So uh, those will be given out to people randomly. If you sign up, there's a uh, Masters of Modern specific MailChimp link. Uh, put your email in there, and then we'll email one person at random or three people at random, and they'll be getting packs from that. Uh, make sure to check out Battle Bosses. Uh, they're the reason we did three today instead of the normal one, uh, and we'll be giving these away. Thank you so much. And on top of that, we're going to be bringing you this guys this segment live every single week going forward with a really, really cool addition that we're going to introduce soon. But that was the first thing, so yeah. let's get all of these packs off You're ready the table. The You're ready for the next, the next segment? We're, we're going to do Dark Top I think I think by winning, I get to decide that you go first for the, uh, the, best, out of five, the, the best five mm -hmm. champion thing at the end. All right. So normally we do an honorable mention. Uh, ben will have to go first every time, so I get a little bit of an advantage in which because cards you, I say out loud. You, I like that you're making the rules up as we go. Yeah, making them as I go. Strong. That's the way this works. All right. Uh, so before we get into is it cards, because that's what we're doing next, uh, we're going to give Marcus Creekan ask the question, uh, is it question, if you have time, do you think Storm is losing ground with the current modern meta? Uh, I don't, you know, Storm is always going to be in its unique kind of space. Right now the format is really aggressive. Yeah. There's a lot of like, between Vengevine and Hollow One, there's a lot of, and humans even, there's a lot of stuff coming at you on the ground. Um, and then humans in control both like have pretty decent answers to Storm. So I think that's a little bit of the issue, but it's a deck that can just take a tournament. I think that it's fine. Uh, there are people, I think there are four to six people playing Storm at the Pro Tour. So pros obviously also think it's pretty good mm. right now still. Um, and just like meta games will shift and you'll get a good day where people aren't sideboarding the right cards against you. Yep. I think, I mean, I like Storm a lot as a deck. I think Storm is, as you said, it's always something that can spike a, a major event. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty hateable. I definitely think the newer version of Storm is more resilient than the old versions. I think, I think I, that the Gifts version has really improved the deck. I think the, the one big thing against it is right now it's very profitable to be main decking or having your sideboard, sideboard Leyland of the Void. Yeah. Like, uh, between all of the different decks that utilize the graveyard in the top five tiers, like last week we went over what the top, you know, ter, type ter, uh, tier zero to ter, tier 1.5 is. What's ter, the top tier? Tier zero to tier five. No, that's not what I want to say either. I don't know. But uh, we talked about the best decks in modern, and a lot of them are hateable. All of them, of the yeah, yeah. Leyland of Void is really good in the format. So, and Storm has a really hard time if you eat its graveyard from the beginning. So, I would say that Storm definitely is getting hurt by some sideboard cards for other decks, while also having a bad matchup against um, just the fact that there's a bunch of blue white control decks out there. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Um, there's like uh, the modern meta game right now, is sweet, and like we're gonna get into this blue red list, I promise. But I do want to say because you know for for Wizardry mm -hmm. Foundry, I did the show ten minutes of modern. It's like little three to five minute segments. They get posted on their Facebook every day, and so usually on the Sunday Monday episodes, it's recapping a little bit of what happened over the weekend competitively in modern. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the mocks was one, the modern mocks over the weekend. It was won by uh, humans, 
But okay. in that top eight, there were three copies of the hardened affinity list, mm -hmm. and the second place list was blue white control. Got it. And so it's like really interesting. Blue white control has become like a true control deck. Like yeah, three copies, to, three copies Jace, two to fairy, and like two to three of so right. tons of stuff. It's like it's really great. interesting. It's the world I want to live in. That's like a real deck now. It's yeah. like a, you know, it's not a bunch of four X's. It's not a just guy burn deck. It's an actual blue white control deck. Is a, a premier deck. And the other cool thing is that hardened affinity list. Scooch over. That hardened affinity list is not. Um, it's really not an affinity deck. That's the funniest part, is people are thinking like, this is just like you guys swapped out a few cards. It's playing four Ancient Stirrings, four Hardened Scales, mm -hmm. two Throne of Geth, an Animation Module. Throne of Geth is tight. You know why they play Throne of Geth. Yeah, because the, all of the extra proliferation, it's another sack. Well, it helps list. them, but no, the, the, main, like the, the tech, the reason Throne of Geth showed up is because Throne of Geth is, in, uh, is used to fight opposing um, uh, Chalice of the Voids. Oh, that makes sense. Because you can proliferate their counter that keep playing your one drops. Oh. I think in this particular deck... It's good um, beyond that, but that's like it started being sideboard tech in... That makes sense. In regular affinity? In regular... No, not affinity. It was another deck that started playing it just because you could sacrifice itself to raise Chalice yeah. up one. And then uh, it was a legacy Delver Lists. That's interesting. Um, it, it's... um Yeah, it's definitely a really, really interesting deck. It like... I was looking at it and I was thinking, like, this doesn't really play, like, none of the three drops that are in traditional affinity, mm -hmm. like the Etch Champions, the Masters, are there. Mm -hmm. it, it, like, plays all ones and twos. It's playing Sparring Construct now as, like, an extra copy of Worker. You're, like, very um, excited about this deck. Well, it's just interesting because, like, <laughs> it, it, the deck, like, shifted and it's, like, now kind of more, it almost feels like more like Infect. Well, I think it's a separate deck. Yeah. I think there's Classic Affinity and there's Hardened Scales. And those are, and that's why, they, that's why they're calling it mod Modular Hardened Scales. Yeah, it's, like, um, really trying to go deep on, like, this combo effect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but anyway. So, so uh, uh, more questions from the chat. Uh, do you think Blue-Rate Wizards burn deck with Sage of Latinam, Storm Chaser, and Adelie's and Thunderous Wrath has it legs in modern? Sage of Latinam? Is that uh, the draw card one, or is that my favorite card? No, it's not. That's it's, not, not that's it's not Sage of Survivor of the Unseen. Uh, Sage of Latinam, right, right. Sacrifice an archer, draw card. Um, they're asking if Wizards is, is going to Yeah. Be. I mean, that's the Hoogland list, right? Like, it's, it doesn't play yeah. Sage, but, like, Hoogland was playing Blue-Red Wizards in that one top A mm -hmm. recently, and he streamed it a bit. Um, that deck is really sweet. It's definitely not that powerful, and, like, the big, the big uh, knock against that deck to me is that when Delver flips, which is what you want to do, mm -hmm. your so Wizard is no wizards. longer turned on, so... Yeah. It's a little of a nombo, like early on, what the yeah, deck wants to do. I think that's fine. I think if this deck is powerful enough, that's a small enough interaction that like you're sacrificing one of your twelve wizards in your deck is good enough. Is no longer a wizard, but it also is now a three-two flyer for one. Well, so, like it's like it, it's almost. I would say it's the reverse. It's you're playing this wizard game plan to make its bad side better. Where instead of getting stuck with a one-one that does nothing, you have a one-one that turns your spells on, and as soon as it's doing the thing you want it to do, your spells are worse, but it's better. Well, here's the reason I think it's bad, mm -hmm. um, and the reason it's so significant is modern is such a modern is such a, a roulette, right? Like it's like such a um, mm -hmm. the first two tur two turns of the game will often determine like how it's going to go. Right. And so if you're looking at an opening hand, and that opening hand has a bunch of these like wizards lightnings, and I don't think it plays any wizards retorts, but um, and you're like, okay, well this card is good because I have this but then your Delver flips, the other half of your opening hand becomes bad all of a sudden, mm -hmm. and to turn it back on, you have to play another wizard, which then crimps your mana. And so I think you get convoluted because you're oh, ideal. Oh yeah, but when you have a wizard in play, your, the mana discount you're getting, I guess it's just Lightning Bolt, but like, you, you they get don't, a discount. Because they don't play Wizards Retort. They don't, they don't play right. uh, Counterspell. So, uh, but anyway, so that's, that's enough about that. Uh, I, we are gonna talk a little bit more about the red let's, stuff. Yeah, let's get into our lists. Yeah, so. Uh, you want you go first? I, I won. I won those those pack wars. My, I can't believe I beat you on that last one. I I had terrible openings, but luckily. Yeah, you had a BFZ pack that had no Eldrazi, right? Yeah, I didn't get anything big. Well, no, no, it had a seven drop though. Okay. That yeah, was yeah, one yeah, that I, I won. Yeah, yeah, and then El, but it was a vampire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Eldritch Moon, you didn't get any. It wasn't any very Eldrazi good. either. We're uh, excited this weekend at GPLA. We're gonna buy like a ton of cool packs and restock this thing with like a bunch of awesome stuff. Yeah, so, I'm excited. Um, next week should be really fun. But um, all right, guys. So we're gonna get into our top tens. My top ten, number one, number ten, is a really bad card, but it did see Pro Tour Modern play, and that is Niv Magus Elemental. Um, it is a one-two hybrid blue-red for one. Um, that states, exile an instant or sorcery spell you control, put two plus one plus one counters on Niv Magus Elemental. This was a long time ago, this uh, Pro Tour play. Mm -hmm. This was the premiere, I think, was it uh, Star City Games deck, mm -hmm. right? So, like, all those guys were playing it, that one Pro Tour. Mm -hmm. It flamed out. Um, admittedly, this is not a very good card, mm -hmm. but the reason it's on my list is because the reasons it was good then... It's still pretty much the same. The only difference is that Gataxian Probe is not legal, so you can't like go all in it quite as hard. But like, 
You, it's definitely still good. You you definitely could still build a deck. This, with this, this card. deck could exist. It has the same problem that all Kiln Fiend decks have, which is just like, oh, it dies. Yeah, I mean, I think you, you like lose to one spell if they just have the removal spell, you're out. Yeah, but I'll, well, they true, but it's also playing a bunch of free spells and stuff. Mm -hmm. So like, um, so yeah, like like uh, I'm pretty sure like if you if you pack the negation your own spell and you exile the pack to this, you don't have to pay for the trigger, right? Sure, because it gets effectively countered while it's on the stack. If you isn't that true? What if you pack the negation, but then before pack resolves, you exile. Packed to this guy, yeah. You don't have to pay for the cost, correct? Right. So yeah, I mean, you have pack negations in the deck to protect yourself later in the game if you mm -hmm. have like a giant seven eight Niv Magus elemental and they have one removal spell. I mean, this reminds me a lot of playing that horrible Delver Pact deck that I was playing. It, it's it's, it's Kill Queen decks. Like it's it's we have one creature that because I'm casting a bunch of blue red spells, they get really really big. And if you don't have a removal spell, I'm going to win. But the problem with modern is that Snapcaster Mage exists, and every yeah. deck can just run twelve removal spells off of four. Right. Uh, so that's my number 10. It's not a particularly good card, but it is yeah. an interesting card. And right. there's, this is what I was saying, when you get past the top like six or seven, there's just not oh, my, that many. My number 10 is my worst card. And it's, I picked one that like is new enough that it hasn't seen any play, but could and has the potential to do so. Did you pick New Jora? Yeah, I picked New Jora. Oh, interesting. Uh, that was my Brawl card on uh, Game Nights. I know, I know. Uh, I think there's combo potential with this card, the fact that it just draws when artifacts come in play, and there's going to be, as we know, there's a ton of different reasons to put a bunch of cheap artifacts in play all mm -hmm. at once. Um, creating some type of eggs like storm combo with Jorah seems like a thing that's possible. Uh, yeah, no, it's 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 by far the worst card I have on my list. Every other card does seen play, but I like at nine I like dropped off. Niv Magus was in contention, but it hasn't seen play since the first Pro Tour. The look on your face when I said Niv Magus was so like disappointed that I figured there was no <laughs> chance that card would be on your list. But uh, well, it hasn't seen play since the first Pro Tour. Yeah, but I mean, it did see Pro Tour play. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I didn't include Epic Experiment, but it had similar. It had similar concerns. Epic Experiments was there for me too. All those were cards that was, was like almost maybe. That like for a second, like it would make like it, people played in storm. People have casted in storm. Yeah, it's seen play. Uh, oh, uh, so before we get past this number ten, one thing to bring up the rules: a lands that you have an activated cost on them. So, for instance, the man lands would count for this. Any of the uh, spell lands from both. Uh, Ravnica block or Innistrad block would count as well. So those are included on these lists, as well as flashback cards that have an alternate cast in, uh, uh, from the back end. So for instance, in the black-white episode, Lingering Souls is included as a card. Oh, I forgot about this. So Desperate Ravings is potential. That, yes. That applies. Desperate Ravings is on my list. Oh, oh I, didn't even, I, didn't, I didn't even remember that was a card I could include. That, yeah, that was. Uh, that's probably the only one, though. I, I believe it is the only one. Yeah. Uh, so you're fine if you didn't include it. Uh, it should okay. have been on my list. All right, number nine. Sage of Epitir, he says. Yeah, I love Sage of Epitir. Uh, um, number nine. <laughs> number nine for me is going to be Storm Chaser Mage. Okay. Um, so blue red for list. a one three flying haste prowess. Yep. Um, this card's like right on the edge of being sweet. I think people have experimented with this card. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting card in the blue red wizards deck people are talking about. Yep. Problem is that deck is very reactive, so. Um, you don't necessarily want to be playing instants and sorceries on your main phase with Storm Chaser Mage. Also, the plus you get with this card because it's a one three as opposed to a two two is a little low. Like it's hard to do a lot of damage with this card. It's like not. It's not that great unless you're already winning, and then at that point you're already winning. Or like casting free spells. I mean, I think there are like pretty, pretty interesting, like pretty cool uh, things you can do. Like for instance, I would love to see somebody try to break the card um, Hidden Strings with Storm Chaser Mage. I think. That's the cipher card, blue blue one, uh, tap, what's it like tap a target permanent, untap another target permanent, and then like it does it again. Okay. So you can like untap a land to get like more mileage to cast like a serum visions, sure. and like I think you could like go pretty far, and you also could then like play that, tap down a blocker. So I think there's some cool stuff, but um, okay. Storm Chaser Mage is my number nine. Um cool. Uh, d -d 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 my list is uh, mine is a Kyranos God of the Storms. Okay, that's all at nine for you. Yeah. Okay. I think every card I have above here is better than Kyranos. Kyranos is really good. Uh, Kyranos hasn't seen a lot of play. Uh, this was a much bigger piece of the format when uh, uh, Splinterton was part of the format. There was right. a premier blue-red deck. This was its kind of chosen finisher. Uh, well, people sideboard, were sideboard. Yeah, 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 chosen sideboard finisher um, that it would bring in against you know more controlly decks or genre people that like would have really trouble dealing with Kyranos and yeah. were trying to go for the long game, uh, making it much more of a hard control deck that this would just kind of finish each other off. 
it's it's one of the pieces that blue red decks have as a toolbox piece to be a sideboard finisher card and will probably be for the rest of the format yeah um it's good i mean the, the interesting thing about cards like this when you have like a one or a two of powerful sideboard card mm -hmm. that costs more than four you're never going to see more than like one or two in a list Correct. and it's going to just sort of cycle in until it gets replaced by something better and so um, and then for people who don't know karanis god of storms is one of the gods from theros it's a legendary enchantment creature god it's three blue red uh it's indestructible it's a six five and as long as your devotion to blue and red is less than seven karanos is not a creature you never want it to be a creature uh which you don't want as soon as it's a creature it becomes significantly worse uh reveal the first card you draw on each of your turns whenever you reveal a land card this way draw a card whenever you reveal a non-land card this way karanos does three damage to target creature or player so not only is it kind of a removal spell every turn but it also is a card draw engine to make it so you're not only drawing lands it's it's either yeah draw an extra card or lightning bolt somebody every turn and that's great the inevitability yeah. of that in a blue red control deck like i think people still play this in sideboards and like blue moon decks yeah it's still get it still sees sometimes um all right what's your so what's your, uh, so so number nine Kuranos, number nine storm chaser what's your number eight desolate lighthouse or as so affectionately referred to desolate loot house this is the uh colorless land from Avacyn Restored, it uh, taps to add one colorless to your mana pool, or for blue, red, one, you can tap, draw a card, then discard a card. It's a, it's one of those lands that when you're trying to decide how many colorless slots you can afford in a list. I have this so much higher than you. Really? Yeah. Loot House is really good, but it's the most this ever saw at one point, this was like a two of in a deck. Some, well, but but it, it, at that point it was a one of or two of in every single blue red deck in the format. But it's been a long time, and this was... Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, mean I still think it does see play though consistently. I think this card's barely anymore, but but it's a good card. It's yeah. a good card. It, it, I mean, it just hasn't seen play in a long time. Right. So yeah, and I think it was less impactful. It was kind of one of those like I'll play this as a land in my deck, but it wasn't like an essential land of the deck. Right. Right. Well, what, someone from the chat, uh, Adelie's Jory and Rune Diver, they're on Storm Chaser Mage at number eight. Uh, yeah, I love I, I love Adelie's and I love Jory N. Mm -hmm. Like we have uh, when we get to the end of this countdown. We, we're going to do our honorable mentions. Yeah, and, and those then, are, then we battle off, and then you can vote. Maybe we'll have the chat vote. Those are doing the, live streams now. Those cards you're deciding, those cards you're, you're, you're listing, Adelie's and Jorian. Well, that was, that was, was Jeffrey Simons. Simon. Jeffrey Simon. Jeffrey Simon, if there was a picture of the kind of cards that Ben Bateman picks as his honorable mentions, those cards would be like in the dictionary definition. Right. Those, those cards are like, Jorian is like the classic, like not quite powerful enough to be competitive, but like so sweet. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, blue red. Uh, my number eight? Yeah. Counterflux. Counterflux. Yeah, so Counterflux is a, I believe it's blue, blue, red. Um, I have it here. Do, 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 so I don't mess it up. Uh, blue, blue, red, uh, instant Counterflux can't be countered by spells or abilities. Uh, counter target spell you don't control. It's part of the uh, uh, can't be countered cycle from yeah. original Ravnica. And then it has overload, which means that you can target every spell in the stack. It's just one of the more versatile tools that um, blue, red decks have towards uh, storm, like it, it is a way to fight kind of storm triggers. You can eat all of those gut shots, not gut shots, grape shots off the stack. It also is an uncounterable counter spell. So there are there are like uh, uh, like stuff like scape shift where you want to be able to counter their spell, but they normally have counter spell backup. This lets you kind of accomplish that. So it's a it's a more versatile sideboard card against storm that is not as good as maybe graveyard hate or other things that are good against storm, but is good against other decks and can be just a catch all. As we count down these lists, it becomes clearer and clearer to me how good blue red used to be and how not quite as good it is now because these are cards that saw a lot more play when splinter twin was a card in the format yes and since splinter twin is in the deck in the format so many of these cards play. like like I well mean, like those are the sideboard card pieces as well yeah so that was your number eight mm -hmm. so then my number seven mm -hmm. is karanos god of storms okay which again this is a twin card so mm -hmm. um yeah i mean we've already said karanos so uh that's interesting i i wonder i'm really curious what your number one is that it was not an obvious number one like in some oh, i thought one was pretty obvious really yeah i think one and two are pretty obvious. I think everything past that is like one, two, and coin three flips. for me are like clearly the strongest. But in the order, I was curious. Like it'll be interesting to see it as as we discuss them. So counterflux uh, is a little higher for me. Okay. Um. So that's my number seven. I said Karanos. Yeah. So what's your number seven? No, no, no. My, that was my number eight was counterflux. Your number seven was Karanos. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my number seven is uh, Ben Bateman favorite Sahili Ray. Sahili is at number seven. Yeah. It got so good. Uh, theoretically. <laughs> uh, there is like, I, so we haven't talked about it on the show, but another Hoogland deck that was, was streamed mm -hmm. is, uh, there's this four color Sahili deck. And I've talked to you about it a couple times, but you've like, yeah, 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 me about it when I've brought it up. Cause I feel like you're unaware of how sweet this is. I mean, it's, I realize that it's probably sweet, but, uh, like it just, it, it's it, like, it's been showing up in top eights. It's okay. a, it's a real deck. So 
like, let me just explain some of what this deck is doing. It's playing, it's playing Lotus Cobra in the same deck as Sahili. Okay. With like Voice of Resurgence, El Eldritch Evolution. Mm -hmm. we'll it's tell comboing that, out. You told me this right. It's like comboing out with like <laughs> Birds of Paradise, and it's like so like, and it's got Renegade Ralliers to like get back your fetch lands to accelerate you. Uh, the deck is bonkers, weird. It's playing like it has the potential for crazy like turn three combo wins. Okay. Um, I don't exactly even really understand how it works, but it's playing like a bunch of sick one ofs It's playing a Thalia's Lancer, so you can search up Sahili because you can Eldritch Evolution it. Sure, okay. Right, it gets a legendary card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it plays like Oath of Nyssa because it digs for either Sahili or land okay. or Felder Guardian. So it's kind of like the ideal card, but it's like and it's like four colors. Um, really weird deck, really cool deck. I want to build this deck. I'm, I'm like kind of on, like I think I kind of want to play this. It right. doesn't seem like it's tier one level powerful. Mm -hmm. But watching Hooglin play it on stream, what it feels like is... It looks fun, it can just steal games. Well, it feels a lot like Pod. Okay. He's, he's playing it, and watching it, it feels a lot like the lines are like, well, with this well, much and, mana... And if it's that complicated of a deck, it's possible that it's really good. It's just no one's gotten good enough with it to do well. That's what that I was mean. the issue with Pod. Was Pod was always the best deck in the format, but it took a year for people to master it out of the format to, and, and find the correct list. Totally. Um, uh, yeah, for those who don't know, Celia Ray is blue, red, colorless, uh, planeswalker. Uh, she has scry one and it deals one damage to each opponent. For a plus, it has a minus two that creates a token of copy, uh, creates a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. That token gains haste and you exile it at the beginning of the next end step. That combos with a bunch of different cards that have ETB effects, uh, specifically if you were paying attention to the standard last year. Felder Guardian, uh, and then minus seven, search your library up for up to three artifact cards with different names, put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. It starts with three. Um, it's three mana planeswalker, uh, and it's part of these combo pieces. Um, Ben's into it. He probably has it much higher than I do. Uh, I have cards that have just seen play more I, consistently. I, I, I understand why Sahili. I mean, Sahili's high for me, but it's not like high. It's not like the number one card okay. or anything. I just, Sahili, the reason I think that I have it a little higher than you is because to me, and I've said this before, the unique power level of this card is high enough and it's also it's one half of an infinite combo so like but there's a lot of space with Sahili that i feel like hasn't been totally explored so like for instance a great example of this is in the same way that with bridgevine mm -hmm. people have started to utilize like like greater garganon with like grave crawler and mm -hmm. blood gas and like you're seeing like really interesting weird interactions i have a similar feeling that Sahili is part of a similar engine sure. where you can be like making copies and then sacrificing those copies well the, the key to Sahili is, is and that's kind of the problem with like the counter like the blue white red decks that are trying to play her is Sahili is better in a deck that's taking advantage of her even if you're not comboing. Yes. And and that's like why the deck that we, you know, uh, the Kessel run worked kind of is because we had a lot of stuff like Wall of Omens and Restoration Angels and other stuff the deck was doing that kind of made it kind of work. Right. And it sounds like this deck is taking that to the whole next level. Yeah. Uh, all right, so mine was number seven. What's your number six? My number six is Counterflux. All right. Counterflux is the counter spell you just mentioned. Yep. Uh, used to be played in back when Rug Scapeshift was a thing. This was usually their counter spell of choice, mm -hmm. uh, so they could go off on seven with uh, with their with their Scapeshift and then yeah. keep open Counterflux. Or even eight. The other way they can like eat the stack up. Even if they get into Counter War, they can eat everything with yeah. their own. Yep. Exactly. Um, cool. Uh, mine. It was all you know. It, it sees some play in Storm still. Any kind of blue red deck Counterflux is like an easy include if you're like looking for that fifteenth sideboard card. Uh, Desperate Ravings is my number. Uh, Six. Okay. Uh, Desperate Ravings is a red and colorless instant. Draw two cards and discard a card at random. It has flashback two and a red. Or sorry, flashback two blue. That's why it's an is a card based on the rules for this thing that Ben forgot. Um, I, yeah, I remember couldn't, we couldn't include Lingering Souls into mono in mono, best ten white cards. No, I remember. It, it was, I remember had, now. Yeah, yeah. I, I wish uh, that I had uh, remembered before. Yes. Uh, so yeah, so this has just seen a ton of play in the history of the format. Uh, Storm is one of the main ones that's seen plays because you were able to get stuff in your graveyard that are spells and take advantage of it. There's just other kind of blue red control decks. This is always a decent sideboard card option. Um, and it's just, it's a really efficient draw spell, especially if you're playing a deck that most of your cards are the same. So if you're discarding, like, this would be bad in Twin, because you could discard a key piece, but if you're playing a deck like Storm, where every card is just the same and you're just trying to get as many cards in your hand as possible, and the fact that you can play out of your graveyard, it's really strong. A lot of you guys probably remember that I built uh, that weird deck a little while back that was like, all of the cost reducer two drops with all flashback spells. Mm -hmm. This is like the essential card in that deck because mm -hmm. it's it's the best thing you can be doing. Like it just means that you have so much gas all game as long as you have any cost reducer for three mana you can draw four discard two. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and someone on the chat actually asked, let me see if I can find the name. Uh, Fred not two four two seven asked, do we think Wizards will ever print another Goblin Electromancer type effect? Yeah, definitely. Uh, and I think it will. Yeah, I mean, for all was last year. 
Yeah, I think I think that should. They have it in their pocket. They'll they'll print more of those in the future because it'll just be standards that want them. And yes, Morale is really powerful, but they might not make it a legendary creature, or they might make it a three drop. You know, there's a bunch of different ways that could happen. I mean, currently between and I don't think I don't think Storm and Modern wants more than eight of that effect that badly. No, I mean currently and eventually it becomes bad. You have four of them that exist currently at two in Modern. Mm -hmm. You have. Electromancer Baral, you have Storm, uh, Stormscape Familiar, which is kind of it. It, um, it makes blue and white. So it works white, really well with souls. Yeah, you can yeah, recast yeah. souls. Um, and then the last one is Curious Homunculus because it flips mm -hmm. and then on the back half has Prowess and that ability. Yeah. Um, all of them are sweet. I like that. I, I'm going to start streaming on Moto. So, like, this is a thing I should tell you guys. I told everybody that I bought a PC. I did. I downloaded Moto. I got it. I have been actually learning how to play Moto. Mm -hmm. If you are one of the uh, incredibly lucky souls that has gone against me and watched me do things like miss the combat step, or you've never played on Moto before, I so literally you're like doing like you know my first Moto story. No. Uh, yeah. I, That's all you're gonna say. I was gonna say like I literally have never used a PC in my life. Mm -hmm. I didn't buy a mouse. It's a touch screen. So I'm trying to learn how to play Moto with a touch screen oh, on a PC a, for the first time. That's a mistake. I did that. It was fun for like the first day. Yeah. And so anyway, I but I'm very quickly going to start streaming some of my wonky brews here. I'm really excited about it. And that Electromancer build is one I've wanted to do for a long time. So I'll probably do that. So um, I'll stay tuned. So my first Moto story is Kamal, not Fist of Croza. Pit Fighter? Uh, Kamal Pit Fighter. The old one that could like tap uh, and go three? Yeah, so for people who don't know what it is, because it's not a modern, Kamal Pit Fighter is a four red red legendary creature human barbarian. He has haste. He's a six one. And if you tap him, he deals three damage to target creature or player. Did you In do it to himself? If you double click... It just kills himself immediately. So, <laughs> very first game ever in Moto. It's like this, they give you like pre-made decks you can play with. So Kamal was in my deck and I literally just like, click, click. And then he died and I was like, what happened? And then it was explained. It was like, I, like I got so <laughs> frustrated double clicking yes, lands, double clicking lands and watching them tap and then being like, how do I untap these stupid lands? You right click. Yeah, but I don't have a, a mouse. Yeah, get a mouse. So I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what's your number five? Um, my number five, I feel like an old man. That's what I feel like. I want you to know that. Uh, my number five is, is it Staticaster? Oh, really? Yeah. Mine is two. Okay, sweet. Perfect. Is it Staticaster? Is Return of Ravnica. It's blue, red, one, flash, haste, zero, three. Taps to deal one damage to target creature and each other creature with the same name as that creature. This is one of those cards that has been good and on the fence of really good in modern forever like it used to be a well, sideboard card in twin it's a sideboard card if if there are decks that have a lot of one ones that are doing really well is it static caster comes in as a card against them but now it's really good because of humans mm -hmm. yeah. like it triggers it gets triggered off of lieutenant mm -hmm. it gets bigger off of any human um this card is like way better than it used to be but it's still I mean, that's why it's number five. It's, but it's in the best yeah, deck in modern. The top five. I mean, the top five cards are all cards that are real cards versus the bottom five that I would say. This is Counterflex like a, is maybe the best of these in the sense that it seemed like it's the most consistent, but it's not the most powerful, which is why Sekili and Desperate Ravings were higher than Counterflex to me. But all, like all five are like real cards. I saw somebody in the chat earlier say that Staticaster was our number one. So guys, comment right now in the live chat. Do you think Staticaster should be higher than five for both of us? Yeah, my, Jeffrey Summit, the, the list I was doing, is it Staticaster was the number one? My, my theory with this is... Staticaster is consistently a two of in the mm -hmm. best deck in modern, but it's consistently a two of in the sideboard. So it's not, it's really good. Staticaster is the number. Oh, there we go. But, uh, but that's, that's my theory. So yep. yeah, Staticaster is good. Um, yeah, it's yeah. also a wizard too, which is interesting. So like in that blue red wizards deck, it's another card mm -hmm. that deck has for ammunition. Yeah. They need just one more thing that makes wizards good. Like a single other card that's like wizards get plus one plus one that doesn't cost four. Uh, and I think that wizards deck would be a thing. Right. Yeah. I think you might be right. Um, all right, what's your number, number, uh, well, mine was, is it Staticaster? It's really good. And, like, the better Lingering Souls also is in a format, the better this card is, the better, yeah. like, Elves is, the better... I would have Ravings on my list yeah. uh, if, if I had known to do this. Yeah. I probably would have had it right for, firmly in, like, the number nine. Okay. I think I'd have it, like, just ahead of Storm Chaser or uh, the other one. Okay. But probably not any higher than that. Yep. Yeah. I don't think the cards that you have that I don't have, I would have on my list. Yeah. So Number I, yeah. four. I mean, is not the best, but I don't know if I like. Yeah. Jory's uh, on my list. I know. Oh. Um, number four for me, Sahili Ray. Uh, this is like, Sahili Ray is arguably my favorite Planeswalker gonna... ever printed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, really? Well, I'm just trying to think if there's another Planeswalker that I like more. Like, I know Jace is first. Right. What? You heard it first. Number one. Well, favorite. So, favorite. I know Jace is more powerful. That's obvious. And I like Jace a lot. And I know... Tefiri is more powerful. I love Tefiri. I think Sahili has the potential to be in the top 10 Planeswalkers of all time by the end of all this. 
I, I just, for me, like, it's, it's always the difference when people are like, what's the greatest film of all time? I'm like, I don't know, The Godfather, Susan Cain, with like, what's your favorite? I'm like, Point Break. Like, it's a little right. bit of a different conversation. Oh, favorite, favorite and best are two. I, I'm saying, really, it's your favorite, because there's a lot of planeswalkers out there. I just, I mean, I try to think about planeswalkers that I've tried to build around that I think are particularly cool, that I think just mm -hmm. have, like, like, I love Agent of Bolas. That's really high on my list. Um, right. You know, I, I'm a really big fan of Agent of Bolas. I think, like, uh, I really, really like Vryn's Prodigy a lot. Okay. Um, but I think Sahili is my favorite planeswalker ever. It just, it's so cool. It's, is it? It's like weird. It just, it, it does a lot of things that I want. Like, there's a lot of like, and, and I can guarantee you guys, you're going to see me brewing with Sahili online. There was this, there was this deck that I wanted to build at one point that mm -hmm. was going to be like Sahili and Tide Hollow Sculler and Greater, Greater Gargadon and then some number of like Wellsprings and things. And I just love the idea of being able to play Gargadon on one. Turn two, I could like play the Sculler and either sacrifice it with the trigger on the stack to permanently exile, mm -hmm. or on turn three, I could then play Sahili, copy Sculler, sack it with the thing on the stack, and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden Sahili's minus ability becomes exile a card. Right. And like, I just think there's really cool stuff you can do, so. Yeah. I love Sahili, what can I say? Uh, mine's is a charm. That's number four? Yep, my number four is is a charm. Is a charm is, uh, for those who don't know, I'm guessing it's higher for Ben. Uh, blue and a red, choose one counter target non-creature spell unless it's controller pays two. Uh, is it charm deals two damage to target creature, draw two cards and discard two cards. Uh, I th you know, it's just a really versatile card. It's seen a ton of play. I'm assuming it's higher on your list. I'm assuming it's your number in your top three. Wait, I'm confused. The oh, uh, loot house is going to be in your top three. I got it. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's a land. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. We've gone over this in yeah. the Artifact episode. I rate lands higher than other cards. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Because <laughs> they're lands? Yeah. You can play them for free? You're bad at magic. Um, is it Charm? <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you want to explain what is it Charm does, this is an interesting one. Uh, it's, I mean, like, part of the big draw to me from a power level is how how well you take advantage of its last ability. Are you really taking advantage of the draw two cards? This card, two cards, and then that becomes a more exciting card to me. But the fact that it's just as a removal spell or a counter spell at all times is just really good. Um, and it's just generally a very versatile piece of any deck that's playing it. Yeah. Uh, I think it is versatile. It does all the things you want it to do. It's and a, It's a charm. The, the name of the game for all charms is versatility. Yeah, but what's so interesting about this card, and, and I will say, uh, is it charm is is a little higher for me, so maybe I'll maybe I'll do my full explanation when we get there. But okay. yeah, I agree. Is a charm's really good, and uh, there are a lot of things to say about this card, so I'll, I'll wait. All right, um, it's number three. Is it is it charm number three? No, that's number four. Is no, it charm is it, is it term number four? Okay, so my number three, because I'm ahead of you. Yeah, is electrolyze. Interesting. Blue, red, one. Electrolyze. Oh, so our deals, top threes are totally different. Yeah. Okay. Electrolyze deals two damage divided as you choose among mm -hmm. the number of target creatures and or players draw a card. It's an instant for three. Electrolyze is a fascinating card. The blue red list is kind of just fascinating because none of the cards that show up in the top three for me are like, there's no abrupt decay. There's no like clear. I just think like, this is the abrupt decay. I think this is the best card on the entire, I mean like, oh, spoilers, but like. But okay, but like abrupt decay for instance is good always and forever in modern, always. It's just forever that's been like a, like a three of in any black red list. Whereas like electrolyze goes, or, or a, Black green list. Electrolyze goes in and out of being played at all in those lists. Sometimes, sometimes those lists or those Jeskai lists. Oh, I'm don't not saying any. I'm not saying it's as good as as a prep decay, but I'm saying that it has seen consistent play at a high level in every version of the blue red decks that exist in the format. And obviously, waning and waxing of if there are good blue red decks, but none of these cards can see play. If so, there's no blue red. Deck. Somebody was playing four of these at the Pro Tour in their right. list, and that's awesome. But I've also seen those Jeskai lists that have like won tournaments, play zero copies of this comfortably, which is why for me. It's a little lower because, and I'll explain my number one and my number two why they're higher. Mm -hmm. um, but I do, I love Electrolyze. This is one of those cards that I remember when it first started showing up in Modern. I was mm -hmm. like, I love this card. I'm mm -hmm. so excited people are finally catching on because I always felt like it was like under underrated. And now I almost feel like it's overrated. Now I almost feel like it's like this is not a, it's not that uh, good. Not if you put it at number three because it's at, it's correctly at my spot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, we can talk about when we get to me. Do you guys in the chat think that we're wrong about Electrolyze? Is, is it not as, is it, am I way off on this? We haven't gotten people responding to the chat in a second, so I don't know what they're thinking. Is our chat dead? Chat, talk to us. Are we making sure we're still alive? Well, we have 33 people here. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't Interesting. know. Interesting. Anyway. Interesting. Uh, but yeah, so uh, my number three is Loot House. Uh, it's How a land. How can you justify this being number three? Because it seems is... such consistent, like, not All, for so everything long. Everything below this has not seen consistent play. Is it Staticaster? Maybe it could be a little bit higher, but even that hasn't Staticaster's seen Staticaster is so much play. better than Loot House. Loot House is like... Right, right now, but in the history of the format, Loot House has seen way more powerful play than, than, than it has. Yeah. 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 <laughs> also, it's a land. Lands are better than everything no, else. No, I get it. I just, like, it's just, it's not that good. 
I mean, it's fine. It's number eight for me. I feel like you would love the Loot House. Like, I love Loot your House. Of card. It's too expensive. If they, if it's Loot not House... too expensive. You're playing a blue red. Like every blue moon deck plays Loot House because you, you want to use cost, the nice and speed. If Loot House had cost blue red tap as opposed to blue red one tap, that it would be maybe one of the best cards in the format. But yeah, like I think totally. at three mana, it's fine and sees a ton of play. But it's also a colorless land, so, so it's what? like you're playing blue red. Yeah, <laughs> it's you're, fine. Eh, it was wrong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, fine. I question your ability to evaluate yeah. cards. <laughs> See, Healy Ray is what, number four for you? Yeah, card's amazing. The card's bonkers good. It's so much better. It's than never won a tournament. Yeah, so Healy can win on a turn. It's just, it has it can, not won a tournament. Yeah, not yet. I haven't, okay. started, I haven't started playing. All of these cards have won tournaments. <laughs> Uh, I was on a feature match with Sahili in round two. <laughs> I've never been on a feature with the Desolate Loot House. That means nothing to the community yeah. at large. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, all right. So that's number three for me. Um, Alex list is done, right? You're no. done. You have no more cards. I have add? number two. <laughs> okay. My number two because I'm going first. It's the um, same as yours, I assume. Oh no, maybe this is your number no, one. No, my number two is Is It Charm. Okay, that's fair. That's a fine place to put it. Yeah. So I think we have the same number one then. No. No, because your electrolyze is your number one. Uh, is it Charm? My number two is your number one. My number yeah. one is your number three. Uh, is it charm is blue red instant? Yep. You, you already explained what it did, right? Is it charm? Yeah. Yeah. So the reason I put is it charm so high is that is it charm has ended up being, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, is it charm? <laughs> don't say ex you have to read what they say, otherwise the people that are listening to this and aren't on the chat will not know what they're saying. Do you want to read the comment yeah. out loud? I've only seen Loot House and weird Jess guy thing in the ice pyromancer lists. Yeah, I mean it's not as good as it used to be. It was good for a while, but that was years ago, and. Alex is wrong. So, um, <laughs> Is It Charm is, the reason I put it so high is that mm -hmm. Is It Charm has shown up now consistently in tons of combo decks. Okay. What, what Is It Charm is so good at is being in a blue-red or a Grixis-based combo deck, it's great at being your turn to, I'm either going to counter your thing, kill your early creature. Or discard my thing that I need to re -enter. Or if nothing else, end of turn, I'm going to set up my turn three to be like perfect. Mm -hmm. And... It's just been that for so long. They've never printed something better than that. It's it's the perfect combination. Uh, they've printed better things than all of the things that it's doing. The fact that you can do all three is important. With the, one card. The, right? the, one of the issues that it has, and the reason I think I had it a little bit lower, is that if it was straight up red or straight up blue, like it, the fact that it's gold makes it so that there are decks in the format that would play this card, but don't because it doesn't really fit with their mana base needs. Something like a Grizzle brand or... Yes! Viraday says, I've seen Isit Charm more than Electrolyze. I'll say that much. I agree. I disagree with him. I'm sorry. I love you for watching. But uh, is, is a Charm is just... Is a Charm is just Electrolyze just, shows up in ton, a lot more decks as a play, main deck card that is a Charm. But in the decks that is a Charm is played in, it's played as a four of, and it's an essential card. How many, how many tier one decks play four of is a Charms in over the, the years, history of Modern? Over the years, it's been played in like... In like uh, Goryeo's Vengeance Reanimator, Not Fury of deck. the Horde. And, and only the... And the main... Goro's Vengeance deck didn't play it because it was a black red straight up deck. The one that did play it was the Jess, the Grixis one that did well at one Pro Tour, and didn't do well at it. It like just was on camera. And once. It, it just might have top to get, sixteen. It just continues to show up. Like I'm not saying saying that Is a Charm is like that great of a card. Oh, my, but I, Mars, I love Is a Charm. I, oh sorry, I hit the mic. I love Is a Charm. Is a Charm is in my top four. I'm not saying it's yeah. a bad card. I'm just saying Electrolyze is significantly better. I, they're both they're both <laughs> great. Obviously, they're high on my list too. Is a Charm for me is the card that when I'm thinking about what do I want to do on turn two in a deck that needs to. Buy time to get there, mm -hmm. but also have a little bit of control early. I think for, for the charms, none of the other charms in modern have ever been as proactive main deck cards as this card. Boros Charm. Yeah, you're right, okay. But Boros Charm is basically still doing one thing. It's still basically yeah, doing, yeah, yeah. It's doing know, it, uh, right? It's basically Isn't charm played. is a much more versatile card than Boris Charm. That's but Boris Charm has seen the most play of any charm, unless I'm missing one. But so yeah. my comment was, not, no, no charm has ever done what it's trying to do as effectively as this card, which is that basically this card is able to straddle. It's able to straddle. So Boris Charm does damage, which is what it's great. But, and it does it better than Is a Charm does versatility. But I could, you could show me 10 other cards that do damage and that are almost as good as Boros Charm, and they're pretty much the same. You can't show me a card that's even remotely similar well, to Is a Charm. You, you, is a Charm is a more unique card than Boros Charm. That's what I'm trying I, to get That's at. what you're saying. I, but Boros Charm is better at doing what it does than Is a Charm is. Yes, Boris Charm. Boris Charm doing four for two is exactly the best possible thing it could be doing versus Is a Charm where like dealing three damage to a creature or just count like like negate is better when you need is a charm for the negate situation. Like Boros Charm is the best at what it's doing. Is a charm is better at straddling the sides. One of Boros Charm is a useful side. One of Boros Charm's modes is more powerful than anything that is a charm is doing. Correct. But Correct. is a charm on the whole is, a charm is, is the most valuable card. useful charm ever printed. 
Uh, two mana charm never printed. Sure, maybe. It is. The only I one it's most valuable. I would say it's the most versatile and, and maybe most useful. This argument has gotten us more live viewers. All right, somebody like stop arguing, you idiots? Is that what they just said? <laughs> uh, they said, wow, caught you all live. Great content. Been loving the videos. Killer. Thank you. I've never had a charm cast against me by Jay Soup. They're, they're not really my favorite that person on the chat. Consistency. Uh, Plus his name is Soup. I love Soup. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you're fired. What's next on the list? <laughs> uh, my number two is your number one, and that's Goblin Electromancer. What a fascinating card this has turned out to be. Oh, yeah. Right? I, I don't know if I would have saw that. Uh, I knew it was going to be really important in Storm when it was printed. I, like that's, that's necessarily not true. I don't know if I would have. If you were like, what's the best blue-red card in Modern? I don't know if I would have thought Electromancer was that. Like... The, my top, the top two for me are just better than every other card on this list. What ended up happening with Electromancer was a few years ago when they banned Seeping Song, there was, a, if I remember correctly, there was a short break and then this card got printed. Or was it around the same time? Uh, it was within the like year a few of months, themselves. Right? I don't know if it was after or before. I don't remember exactly, but what I do remember is there was a small break and then somebody was like, if you play Goblin Electromancer, we can make an epic experiment work. And then that lasted for about two months and they were like, oh, we actually, need that. We just win. you can just play this card and it's yeah. what makes Storm work. Right. And then it was good. I think, I think Goblin Electromancer, I think Seething Song got banned like in, I want to say February-ish before RTR came out. Okay. It might have been right after it, but I think Electromancer soft play in Storm immediately, regardless of where, where. but like. People didn't figure out the best way to use it. Because like, like you're mixing up a little, like with Baral, that's also what happened where like there's a bunch of cards banned and then Baral is printed like right after it. Yeah. And like very quickly just so like, oh, Baral can replace Gitaxian Probe in Storm and it's still fine. Yeah. Which is why like, I keep pointing at Graveshot. Like, I would rather them ban Graveshot than any other um, card out of a Storm deck now. Like, I think, like, Serum Visions, Desperate Rate, like, not Desperate Ravings. Uh, there are cards that keep getting banned that's, like, a knock out of Storm's belt, and Storm keeps coming back. And I think that's because Grapeshot interacts on a level that it doesn't need to be able to interact with. Would, would That would absolutely kill Storm, and they would I have to try to win with Empty the Warrens. No, they, they'd have Empty the Warrens, and they would have Aetherflux Reservoir, which are both cards that you can interact with on the stack. Or, like, not on the stack. You can interact with them in play, which I think would make the deck a better thing for the format. I'm just saying, don't ban more cards out of Storm that aren't Grapeshot, because Grapeshot's the thing that's really the, the big person in responsible for these cards getting banned? Would they, would they, would Not they that they would. Would they play Haze of Rage with, uh, with the tokens that you get from Empty the Warns? Maybe? That seems a little loose, but I don't think it's an impossible thing. Like a one of, maybe. I do like that card. Haze of Rage? I, like, I, I love all of the cards from Time for a Block that have, so those who don't know, it has Buyback 2, Storm, all creatures get plus one, plus zero. For I love the mixed match of abilities. Yeah, right, like, Buyback. Like, and, yeah. I love Buyback with a thing, or Cycling yeah, with Flashback. Too. Like, all of those are really dope. I'm yeah, Cycling cycling Madness. Yeah. Uh, Goblin Electromancer. Yeah, so it says Jay Soup, in one game I killed two to three Electromancers, Brawls, and was about to win, and then they killed me. Yeah, it's a very resilient deck. Yes, yeah. no, Storm is really good. And, and Goblin Electromancer is an amazing card in that deck, back to Goblin Electromancer. Uh, it's one of the backbones of Storm. Storm is now basically a eight Goblin Electromancer deck. Brawl is one of those, but it's really Electromancer that's the big yep. piece. It also is, like, I've killed people just by attacking with Electromancers in Storm, where it's just like, oh, well, I have nothing else to do while I'm doing this. I'm going to just keep attacking you, and yeah. by getting them down to, like, you know, 10, because they were fetching themselves, I was able to Storm for 10 versus 18 and yep. do a lot, you know, be able to win that way. And so I, I think it's a really key part of the deck. Um, and it's just it will be good forever. So it says Vyrde or Virde, I'm not sure how to say your name. Um, whenever Electromancer is cast, it's an immediate must answer, which I think is true. And that's yeah. I think that to me is why it is so essential at number one. Um, uh, I mean, I've made my argument for my number one. So talk about it a little bit. Uh, with Electrolyze? Yeah, I mean, I know we argued about it, but like, so specifically, I. So I think I think versatile removal spell that's played in every, like most versions of blue red control decks in the history of a format is a more important card to the format and a more powerful card than a card that is very important in one deck and that deck is always good but has regularly been not tier one because right. it's just as easy to hate out. Like Electromancer, if Electromancer started being a key piece to another deck that wasn't Storm, yeah, I would maybe move it up. But the fact that it's only in that one deck. And if you got rid of Electromancer, that deck doesn't die. Yeah. It, to me, makes it kind of not as important to me as Electrolyze, which is like an important tool to fight stuff like Lingering Souls. It's one of the key ways that blue-red decks can fight against Elves or Merfolk, like other decks that are yeah. important. It's like much more of an important pillar of the removal suite of the format. And I think just removal is more important in modern than any other format. Like there's a reason that the top five cards are... Um, 
four removal spells and uh, no hierarchy. Like, right. It, it, it's, it's removal is the name of the game in this format, and being able to kill creatures is, and Electrolyze is a, one of the unique ones that can do that. Right. Um, yeah. So that is going to wrap up our top 10. We have some honorable mentions coming at you guys in a second. Before we get there, I do want to remind everybody of just two quick things. The first one is we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash the MMCast. Alex and I have so many cool ideas. We have like brand new video content that's going to be coming at you guys, deck techs on Modern's Best Decks. Um, and the biggest and coolest thing is this week, we're giving away these pack openings to you guys, the, the, the sign-ups for, for Battle for, Bosses. For Battle Bosses. So if you sign up on the link, there's new people in the chat that didn't hear. Uh, in the episode description, there's a link for Battle Bosses uh, MailChimp list. You click on it, you put your email in. Anyone who's on that list, it'll be a separate list, has a chance to win one of these three packs. Uh, one of these packs is worth like, what, 30 or 20 bucks, 30 bucks? Yeah, something like that. Like, it's a Sony, a Sony Silence. Silence and a foil Triland. Tri um, and, and then going forward, mm -hmm. after the Battle Bosses sign up, if you put your in information there, which is a great game, so you should do it, we are going to start giving away the pack openings from every single week mm -hmm. to a lucky patron inside a Grimoire. So more information coming on that next week. But literally, guys, you should sign up for the Patreon. Uh, it helps us do what we're doing, and we're going to be able to buy packs, buy grimoires, send stuff out to you, make more videos. That's how we do it. So help us out there, please. Uh, it's what we need. I think there's also a link to the Patreon in the description. There is. Yeah, right we've done the show a long time, and, and your guys' uh, help would mean would mean the world. So let's yep. get into Patreon our, slash the MMCast. Yep. Cool. Let's get into our honorable mentions. Uh, um, so to explain how honorable mentions works. And now that we have a live chat, I'm excited for the live chat to be the voting process instead of us posting this on Twitter three days around. So we'll have immediate knowledge of who's winning this contest. Uh, me and Ben are also either both going to give a card, and then the chat will vote on that card. And we have 30 mm. seconds to explain why that card is amazing. Uh, and then once those 30 seconds are done, we make a obnoxious buzzer sound to shut the person up. And then the chat will get the vote while we discuss a little bit of how we feel about that card. Sick. And then, uh, and then we do that uh, five times. We have five cards. Uh, mine are all uh, the best. Get we have ready. five? I thought we did three now. We uh, do five? I, think we, I could do five. Okay. Do you want to do four? Sure, we'll do four. Okay. Um, I'm going to go first. I don't right. have to go first on every one of them, though, do I? Yeah, you have to go first on every one. It's not fair at all. I, I won the pack war. It, you just made that rule up. Well, we, we needed something <laughs> to win. This feels like the thing to win. This is such an advantage. I promise you, I promise you that it's going to be fine. I promise don't, you, don't worry. I'm going to stack the deck against you. Um, all right, my number uh, one. I'm going to say that my deck is stacked, and you don't even know what's coming at you. Hey, this is a kind of an exciting moment. We just launched this YouTube channel about uh -huh. six weeks ago, and we've been getting people, and we just for a second there hit 30 live watchers. Oh, nice. Uh, which, like... Obviously, what? normally the show goes out as a pre-recorded, like, tape thing. Mm -hmm. But thank you to the 30 of you that consistently are watching the stream. It's actually yeah. kind of fun to have a live audience. Yeah, it's really, it's a blast. We've, uh, like, really, really not focused it. on live until, like, just right now. Well, and, and, and we were doing it on Facebook, and then we recently moved it to YouTube, partly because the system that we're using, this Mevo camera, uh, can do YouTube and other places all at the same time. But if you do it on Facebook, Facebook's terms of service means you can only live stream directly to Facebook. So this allows us to kind of spread it out. Um, and plus, we wanted to wait till we had a little bit more of an audience built on the YouTube channel. We're almost at a thousand people that have subscribed, which is really awesome. So that's really yeah, exciting. Yeah, it's moving. It's yeah. really exciting. So all right, I'm going to jump in first. Ready? Yep. Three, two. Okay, my number one call is Joyra of the G2. I don't start the timer until I explain what it does. Blue, red, one for a 2-2 legendary creature human wizard. For two mana, you may exile a non-land card from your hand, put four time counters on the card, and it, if it doesn't have suspend, it gains suspend. If you guys don't remember, uh, that means during your upkeep, you remove a vanishing counter, a time counter from it. Mm -hmm. Once there's no counters, the card is cast without paying its mana cost. Okay, this card was the very first card that I ever played in a regional tournament. This was like, I took this to regionals, I tried to play it, I've told the story before. It's such a unique, such a cool card. Suspend is one of my favorite abilities of all time. The ability to then exile something enormous, like a Wrath of God or a huge Eldrazi creature. Uh, do things in the meantime as you set up for that thing to come off Suspend is so cool. Uh, this card is just like unique and beautiful and wonderful and one of the great commanders of all time. Um, I'm really, really, really a big fan of Joyra and I'm glad they brought her back in the new set because I think she's a terrific character. And uh, one of my cards. There you go. Joy of the Gitu. So you, 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 you're going to have to do that as well. The uh, buzzer? Oh, the timer. Yeah. Do you have the buzzer on your phone? Yeah, yeah, I do. Cool. Are you ready? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, my card for the battle this off, uh, let me put Giora here for you. Giora of the Gitu? Yeah. Giora of the Gitu versus. My, uh, my number one pick here is uh, Noggle Bandit. It's one blue-red, blue-red hybrid. It is a creature Noggle Rogue. 2-2, uh, Noggle Bandit can't be blocked except by creatures with Defender. 
You ready to set that timer? So the reason this is great is because you can pump him with <laughs> power and toughness pump effects, giving him the ability to become uh, an unblockable large creature that's attacks. You know, in is it static caster deck? Not is it static caster deck? Sorry. Uh, in kiln fiend decks, where you're wanting to make your creatures bigger and bigger, this gives you an unblockable source of damage that is able to kind of get in there, do the damage that needs to be done. Plus, he's half donkey, half man. <laughs> um, in rogue decks, if you want to make a rogue deck, he's also a unblockable rogue that makes it available. Plus, he gives you two pips of devotion to make Karanos into a creature if that's what you want to be doing. Ah! <laughs> you went there. You did it. Uh, you sold Noggle Bandit really hard. You know, it's uh, get ready. I appreciate you punting. Please I appreciate vote. you punting that one. Okay. Yeah, that was really right. nice of you to do that. You know, you know, uh, I'm really excited because after this one, uh, you know, and winning it off of my five picks, I'm going to be continuously undefeated against you in this game. I think I lost once. You won one. Uh, you still have not bought me a dinner. You've been you've missed all these shows because you've been doing really embarrassing things out of town. I keep saying it on the show, and I've never defined what they are, but it's really embarrassing. You've been banned I mean, a number of times. Yeah, a number of times, but none of them for losing yeah. this specific. Okay, game. my number two. Are you ready? Yep. No, my, no, I'm not number. Yeah, people yep. are voting. Everybody's voting on Joyra. Do you see how many people are voting on Joyra? Uh, yes. You got you got absolutely smashed, smashed. Uh, people just under underestimate Noggle Bandit. <laughs> Soon. Ah, our show Noggle. says Noggle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Our show. Noggle ban it because right. I play Boggles, What's says Jeffrey card? Simon. Uh, the Noggles are catching up. Um, <laughs> all right, all right. So once you're done uh, doing this, yeah. and I'm doing mine, and we put the next one a vote, that's when we'll count the votes from the previous one. Okay. So, so it's once the new vote starts, the last vote gets tallied to okay. tell who the winner is. So vote, vote for Jora. I believe in Jora for you, too. The Noggles are getting it. Come on. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Yep. My number two is Niv Mizzet the Fire Mine. This card right here. Uh, Niv is the Fire Mine, red, red, blue, blue, two for a 4 4 flying legendary creature, dragon wizard. Whenever you draw a card, Niv is the Fire Mine deals one damage to target creature or player. Also has the ability to tap to draw a card. Okay, Niv is the Fire Mine. First and foremost, this card combos with Curiosity, Affinity, and I to go infinite. Everybody knows this. If you've ever played Commander, it's one of those things people do that people hate, from what I understand. I've never done it. I love Niv is the Fire Mine. I think it's such a cool card. The idea of uh, like a dragon genius. The flavor text is amazing. It's all like the angry math. Uh, you know, signs and cosines and whatnot. Um, there is a real deck you can do with this. I have built it. I would like to test it out with Goryeo's Vengeance, this card, Curiosities and things like that. And you combo that with like Invisible Stalker. You draw tons of cards. It's super weird and wonky, but this card is just really good. Like if you have this and play a couple turns, it's probably going to take over the game. Uh, sorry, I was actually paying attention to the YouTube feed, which was off by three seconds. So you got yeah. an extra two seconds out of that. Good for you. Uh, you got an extra three. This is good for you. Yeah, good for me. Because you're not going to be able to beat my next card. Um, all right, that so that was mine. So, all right, yeah. all right. So that was that was a Niv Mizzet what? The Fire Mind, not Draco Genius. Niv Mizzet the Fire Mind versus. Tell me when you're ready. Uh, yeah, yeah. You have to explain what it does. So, uh, so my next card is Noggle Hedge Mage. It's two blue and a red <laughs> Noggle Wizard creature. It's a two-two. When Noggle Hedge Mage comes into play, if you control two or more islands, you may tap two target permanents. When Noggle Hedge Mage comes into play, if you control two more mountains, you may have Noggle Hedge Mage deal two damage to target player. Ready? Uh, side that, side that, and start. Uh, you know, we were talking about wizards. This is the novel wizard. Not only is he a wizard that gets pumped all your wizard spells to make them cheaper, he also does two damage when he enters play. It's really easy to get both islands and mountains because of shock lands in the format, so that makes it really easy. Not to mention, if you're being aggressive, which you want to be with wizards, you can tap down two of the creatures that would block, being able to get extra damage in there. It's a huge blow when this guy comes into play. Uh, he's got a cool staff. <laughs> This is what the card looks like. Noggle King! <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and if you need to get some hedges. So, great because he's a wizard. Great because he taps ah! up first, Great because he does damage. They call him King of the Noggles. Uh, I appreciate you doing this. This is really nice of you to give away. Uh, to, to just give away all of your choices like this. It's really, really cool. Uh, all right. People didn't even, like, Nivens the Fire Mind's popping up hard on the feed right now. Yeah. 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 So, okay, let's count off the Jora votes. How bad did I beat you? Uh, Jora votes. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, I have two knuckle votes. <laughs> <laughs> you, have some loyal, you have some loyal fans. <laughs> All right. Uh, cool. In round two, uh, you, get re you ready? You ready for your third pick? Yeah, I'm ready for my third pick. Okay. You ready? Yeah. My third card is called Cerebral Vortex. It looks like this. 
Um, this card is an instant for blue, red, one. It was originally printed in Guild Pact. Um, it states, target player draws two cards, then Cerebral Vortex deals damage to that player equal to the number of cards he or she has drawn this turn. It's an instant. So Cerebral Vortex, kind of an underplayed card, underrepresented card. This is a three mana instant speed draw spell. Modern uses its life total as a resource, so to be able to draw two off of this card is strong. It also doubles down as a burn spell later in the game if you need to. If somebody like, for instance, like Sphinx Revs and you play this in response, they lose all the life for all the cards they've drawn as well as two more. So it's actually a pretty interesting card. It has kind of unique abilities. And if you were to combine this with any kind of a cost reducer, it really starts to get pretty strong. It becomes with, with an Electromancer or Brawl, two mana to draw two and take two, or two mana to have your opponent uh -huh. draw two, probably take three. That's cool. Cerebral I mean, Vortex. Like an Owling Mine kind of situation. Card is super sweet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's like another Owling Mine card in blue red that's pretty good. Um, I think we should do five. Fevered Visions okay. is what I'm thinking, what, what that one would be. All right. Uh, you ready? Yep. All right. So, my uh, number three pick. <laughs> I'm going to explain so. what's going on here at the end of this uh, piece of shenanigans. <laughs> Noggle Rain Sacker. <laughs> Uh, Noggle Ransacker is a uh, two blue and a red uh, Noggle Rogue. When Noggle Ransacker comes into play, each player draws two cards and discards cards at ra uh, discards a card at random. It's a two one. This guy enters play, great in the Rogue deck, and draws you two cards. If you want to discard a card, talking about uh, what's it called? What's the card called? Desperate Ravings. This is def Desperate Ravings on a creature. You draw two cards, discard a card. Plus you get a two one. You can loop it by blinking it in blinking decks. The one blink the Noggle. You can also just you know just get stuff in your graveyard. It's a great discard outlet. It's a pretty easy include pretty aggressive at 2-1 stats and uh, I'm really psyched, psyched uh, you know I just he's gonna do the best he's like digging in a chest <laughs> he's getting some, Ooh, some cups he's, he's ransacking he's uh, explaining the art here guys <laughs> all right ah, he did it he started explaining the art on the card okay what was your card <laughs> A better one? <laughs> what, what, what was it called? It's Cerebral Vortex? Cerebral Vortex I mean what's funny is I think of the Noggles that one's probably the most playable so what what are our votes on the Niv Mizzet category? Uh, let me write, get it in here. Ransacker. Please vote. Uh okay. Niv Mizzet one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. I got eight votes for Niv Mizzet? Uh Noggles got one, and then someone asked what's the meme. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> the fact that Noggle's got any votes means you should just be winning. I, I agree. I think every I think all my votes should be tallied together to and five? Then compared to all each one separately. This will be like dog ears for you, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, next Wait, up, let me for make me. sure I know what I'm doing. My next one. It's a hard choice. I think I got it. Okay. Um, so my next number four. We'll do, we're doing five. Yeah. Okay. Um, as this is a big shout out because I love this card and I wanted to use this card and I'm glad somebody pointed this out in the chat. Uh, my next card is Jory and Ruin Diver. Blue, red, mm -hmm. one for a 2-3 legendary creature Merfolk Wizard. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, draw a card. So I think this card is kind of underplayed. It definitely got a little bit worse after we after they got rid of a Gitaxian Probe, but it's a Merfolk, which is really interesting. It allows you to play some kind of tribal stuff that I think people haven't really experimented with. It's also a wizard, which makes it a lot better now that we have wizard tribal going on. And really, as a card draw engine, the fact that it's a 2-3 for three, 3 allows you to really like pump this guy up with a wizard, uh, like some sort of a wizard lord, or anything that just gives it the one extra toughness, and then survives Lightning Bolt. And I think this card is really, really a cool way to gain card advantage in multiple tribal decks. Um, plus, look at the art. So cool. He's got the stack. Uh, you don't at me. Makes me feel like I'm, you know, I wish you would make more obnoxious noises. I add you every time. Yeah? Okay. Uh, cool. All right. Ready? For my number, my number four? Uh, We're all four. ready for your number four. <laughs> We're all ready for it? Yeah. All right. Uh, the card is Brutal Expulsion. Oh, wow. It's not Bam. a noggle. Bam. It's not a noggle. Uh, two blue and red. Devoid. Choose one or both. Return target spell creature to its owner's hand or Brutal Expulsion deals two damage to target creature or Planeswalker if that permanent would be put into a graveyard this turn, excellent instead. Uh, this card is maybe my favorite card from all of Battle for Zendikar. Yeah. It's the dopest. Uh, it, uh, well, I mean, like, I'm a big Venser fan. This lets you Venser with Snapcaster Mage. You can also bounce your Snapcaster Mage with it if you want to. Also, just the versatility of doing two damage. We talked about the versatility of Visit Charm. This allows you to do it. Plus, it's colors. Who doesn't hate that on the weird times that that might be relevant? But more specifically, it's a great controlled card. Super versatile. Also, if you have a combo deck that gets a bunch of things on the stack, like 
epic experiment. You can use this to return something to your hand from your deck so that you can replay it. Mm. Um, so it's like pretty versatile in combo decks like that. Uh, yeah. Says Mark Shepard, not a noggle. Get that out of here. I agree. Um, what are our votes from the last round? Uh, the last round is uh, Cerebral Vortex gets one, two, three. Uh, three. Wow. Did I get crushed on that one? Oh, four. Four. Someone was late. Uh, I don't know. Brutal Expulsion was my card, wasn't it? Oh, no, never mind. Yeah, you got three. And I got, am I winning this one? One Noggle Ransacker, two Noggle Ransacker, three Noggle Ransacker. I got three, so it was tied. We tied. My best was tied. It was just pointed out in the chat, by the way, your card is uh, not legal. Modern? It is. It's colorless. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm roll my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a blue red card. Uh, it requires blue red mana to cast, similar to the land. Yeah. So I think that was actually how I stipulated this, so uh, I'm going to keep it. All right. It's a DQ. All right. You ready? Uh, you ready for this last round? Yeah. Oh, I need to put it in there. Uh, what was your card again? My card was Jory N. Ruin Diver. Fix. Verse. How do you spell Jory N? J-O-R-I. Cool. Dash E-N. Dash E-N. Uh, Ruin Diver, please vote. Cool. All right. Ready? Yep. This is your last one. All right. You got it? I got to decide what my last one is here. Oh, man. You I didn't have it? I didn't save the best for last. Well, okay. eh, there's some pretty sweet ones here. I saved the best for last. You did? Uh-huh. Oh, this is you coming on the back stretch. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, oh, I got one. Well, I got my noggles out of my system, and now I'm on to like, good cards. Thank goodness. Yeah. Jorianne, Jorianne, Jorianne. Uh, all right, my last one is Spellheart Chimera. Blue, mm -hmm. red for a creature Chimera. Flying Trample X3. Spellheart Chimera's power is equal to the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. Um, this card is super sweet. This card, I tried playing in standard. I remember in a God's Willing deck with like early beaters, and I was trying to get this thing up big enough with like, uh, you know, War Leaders Helix and things like that to get there. Never quite got there, and this card has always been just on the edge of playable, but I do think that if you play this in a heavy, heavy spell deck with some sort of like post-mortem lunge type of get it out of the graveyard and give it haste, this card can do tons of damage. You can you could set up a combo deck with this card, post-mortem lunge, and some sort of a double striker, and you could win out of nowhere. I mean, seriously, with, with uh, Thought Scour, and other cantrips and things like that. Yeah, this card's sweet. Cool. Nice, nice card. Yeah. I'm going to get it in there now. Spellheart, Spellheart Chimera. Spellheart Chimera. Cool. It does die to Lightning Bolt. <laughs> uh, that's unfortunate. You know what card that I'm going to use also does dies to Lightning Bolt. Hmm. My card dies to Lightning Bolt. But uh, it lets you rebuy your lands. I'll tell you that. Uh, my number five hmm. and my last card of the day they're back. <laughs> Noggle Bridge Breaker. Two blue, red, blue, red. Uh, Noggle Rogue. Uh, when Noggle Bridge Breaker comes into play, return two, return a land you control to its owner's hand. It's a 4-3. Uh, ready? Turn that timer. All right. So the reason this card is dope is because it lets you rebuy your lands. And it's a 4-3 for four, 4. I mean, a 4-3 for four, 4 is already really, really effective at doing a lot of damage. In modern, it's a strong it's, ability. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Lightning Bolt has fallen in place. Uh, Fatal Push, they have to fetch to get it too. So really only Path is the only good removal spell that gets this card. But the key feature is rebuying a land. You get all of the sweet rebuy effects. Like if you want to get a Sajiri step back, you just put that back in your hand, then you get to play it. Uh, if you want to scry with the Halimar Depths, you get to do that as well. Hmm. So the rebuying land effects lets you trigger Landfall. Really Really powerful. Plus, he's a four, three, four, four, and the sweet rogue deck. Uh, so, in case anybody just has just come on the stream or is confused, you're not mistaken. Alex <laughs> did fight for four different noggles. He even tricked us with brutal explosion, though it's not actually a blue red card. So, well, that's he, that's. He I feel only like fought would for noggles. That. <laughs> he only fought for noggles. <laughs> Well, I wanted to make sure that the only blue red cards I picked are the obviously superior right. creature type of Noggle. I won't lie, I'm impressed. Uh, all right, so, you want to see what, how Spellheart Chimera did? Yeah, I would love that. Or, oh, you want to see uh, how uh, Jorian did. Uh, Jorian won uh, so thoroughly that I don't think I got a single <laughs> vote for the other card. For Brutal Explosion? Uh, yep, Brutal Explosion didn't get one vote. It's really sad. I love that card. You got house this time. Uh, no, I think I won. <laughs> uh, so but I have my Chimera. dignity. <laughs> so, so I'm going to tell the story of uh, why this whole Noggle thing just happened to everybody. There's two pieces to it, and one involves a contest mm. uh, that still has not been accomplished. <laughs> uh, so, 
Um, my first starter decks after I got back into Magic, so I played when I was a kid, and then I left, and then in 2008, I got into Magic, and me and my friend Mael uh, went to, uh, who's a caterer, he's doing lots of cool stuff in LA, uh, we uh, went to a local comic book store after helping my friend move, because we talked about Magic, and we bought a bunch of starter decks and mm. random packs, and the two starter decks we bought were a the, t the, the Teneb uh, blue, uh, junk, uh, now it's Abzan deck, uh, and then the blue-red uh, Lorwyn deck, Shadowmoor block deck that was Noggle-themed. So the very first cards I ever owned were Noggles. And so for some reason that creature type has planted itself in my brain so that every time we talk about Boggles, hmm. I say Noggles incorrectly instead. And so to really cap this off, last year I started a contest online that no one has won. This has not happened. Someone needs to, I believe it was top eight, with a total of two Noggles in their main deck. They have to win, a, they have to win an FNM or they have to win a 5-0 on Moto. And if they can do that, then I will give them a copy of every single noggle in foil uh, as, as, as the reward signed by, the, by, by me. And you can sign it too if you want. So that's the contest. It still hasn't happened yet. That's how bad these cards are. <laughs> They're very bad. Uh, very I, bad cards. At least two of them have to make it work. I feel like you could put the one that, like, um, uh, uh, well, the wizard one, when wizards isn't the worst idea I've ever had. Uh, and I also think the one that lets you draw cards and then discard a card at random out of just a random blue, white, red deck is probably fine. Like, play, you just need two of them. Just it's need doable. two on the deck. So I believe in you guys. Uh, the votes for the Noggles, the last one. Uh, one, two, three, four, uh, five. Six, seven spell hearts. <laughs> no noggles. <laughs> uh, noggles got. I actually did okay. One, two, two. Big shout to Brandon S. Russell in the live chat. Good to see you, Brandon. Uh, suddenly Ben is signing as Kessler number two. Uh, they do want me to make a deck name that includes a brutal expulsion of Noggles and make it happen. Include all of them in one deck. I might, uh, those are cards we keep it off on Moto that on this like Moto adventure we're going, maybe we'll like build the list and then we'll play it on, on a 5-0 and just get trounced all day. You, uh, owe, me, you owe me five lunches together. for those five cards. <laughs> <laughs> I well, first off, brutal expulsion is a card I would have included if I did this for real. Yeah. Second, uh, no, you owe me like 30 lunches and now you owe me 29. You just acknowledge that he didn't do this for real. <laughs> I did it for real. Yeah. I believed it's in the Noggles. Enough. All right, guys. The Noggle tribe, one of them has to see play, or they need to come Maybe. back. Yeah. If Wizards bring Noggle back, I'll be so happy. Uh, any Wizards employees watching this, just like when you're like, hmm, we need a blue-red tribe randomly in this set. Noggles are looking for a comeback. Thanks for listening, guys. It's been a great show. Uh, thanks for watching. This will be up. Yeah. This will be up officially on iTunes on Thursday on all of the other places you can hear our show. Uh, also, we will be doing brand new stuff going forward. Awesome stuff with the Patreon that we mentioned. So go check out the Facebook group. We have a Facebook page and a group that you guys can go be a part of, as well as uh, you can find me on Twitter at Ben Baby Media. You can find him at Kess Wiley. Um, oh, what do you got there? So we're going to do one final pack opening because one of them is Simic. Or one of them is Cynic, and one oh, of them is Is It. This is exciting. Uh, so we own, as part of the pack pool, and we're going to include them here, uh, an Is It and a Cynic. These are uh, from the pre-release? These are the pre-release packs. Sick. From uh, RTR and uh, Gate Crash. And we're going to open them. I'm going to do Is It, because obviously I won the Is It contest that uh -huh. I just did. Yeah. And you're going to do Simic. Sick. And we're going to see who wins this pack war. And this is also giving, given away to one of the, the people that sign up for battle the bosses? battle bosses. Yeah, one last reminder, guys, just in case you missed it. Uh, the Kickstarter launches tomorrow. If you're hearing this on YouTube or on iTunes, it launched on Tuesday. Go check it out. Yeah, Kickstarter. August 14th is when it launched. Kickstarter.com slash battle bosses? Yeah, battle bosses. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's actually true. Go to battlebosses.com or check out the Facebook or anything else. But if you sign up for the email that's in the description of this episode, you can get updates through that and you will be eligible to win one of these rewards. Well, I opened one of my all-time favorite cards. Uh, I opened up a card that we talked about today. What'd you open? Um, did we get another one? Did you open a Niv Magus Elemental? I did open a Niv Magus Elemental. Well, I opened another bad card I've talked about on the show before, and that is Biovisionary. Do you guys remember this card? I have oh, talked yeah. about Biovisionary many times. The Mirror Weave Biovisionary deck? That so was a good idea. I think the best cards I have in here, there's a, a Frost, Frostburn Weird, which is like that a key piece to standard uh, mono blue devotion. Um, I opened Rust Scarab. It's my biggest. Yeah, so five drop. Uh, I got a Void Weaker. I think the coolest stuff is Div Magus Elemental, and then obviously you get one Simic and one Is It of these token cards. Did you open three more to make a draft deck? Sick. <laughs> Biovisionary. All right. Weave. 
There you go, guys. That's prize number three. Four. Uh, thank you. Prize number four. So four people get prizes. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Uh, make sure to subscribe to all the things we mentioned during the episode. All of the important stuff is in the description below. So check that out. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, and we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for listening, guys. Have a good one.